Hello, everyone. Well, Hartford this afternoon suffered one of the greatest catastrophes in its history. When during a matinee performance of Ringling Brothers' Barnum and Bailey Circus, the big tent suddenly burst into flame and burned to the ground, causing more than a hundred deaths and unestimated casualties. The American Circus, for most it is and has always been a place of wonder and amazement. For generations the circus has delighted and entertained millions of people of all ages, and has been a place people can go to experience the fantastical and outlandish, the colorful and comedic, and maybe, just maybe, forget about the harsh realities of life for a little while. But what happens when such a place of joy and amusement becomes a whirlwind of terror and trauma? when a day of fun and magic turns dark and deadly. This is the tale of just such a day. This is the sad, true story of the Hartford Circus Fire of 1944. The year is 1944, and the world is ravaged by World War II. In the United States, many homes were affected by the fighting overseas. Millions of fathers, sons, and brothers were deployed on fronts in Europe and Asia, leaving mothers and children to handle things at home. There's no doubt that any break from the constant stress and worry of their lives would be a welcome one. At this time, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus was the largest traveling circus in America, and despite the war, it was still going strong. Though depleted of some of its most valuable manpower and ability to obtain sometimes badly needed equipment and materials, the circus still maintained a regular schedule. Traveling from city to city by train as it had for decades now, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey continued to provide a badly needed distraction from the war. With stringent rationing of many things, as stated, the circus was suffering from a lack of materiel. One of these was proper waterproofing agents for their big top. Using a widely known and accepted alternative at the time, the massive 200 feet wide, 450 feet long, and 48 foot high canvas tent was treated with a mixture of paraffin wax and gasoline. On July 5, 1944, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus had scheduled two shows in the city of Hartford, Connecticut each day for two days, one day show and an evening show, before the circus would be struck, loaded onto the train cars, and moved on to the next town on their itinerary. Due to heavier than usual rail traffic on that day, the trains arrived on site so late that the daytime show was cancelled. Now circus folk are known for many things, and being superstitious is one of them. We tend to have some quirks that others consider odd, including the belief that missing a show is particularly bad luck. So when the day show was cancelled and the evening show as well as the two planned for the next day were slated to run as normal. There were many performers, hostlers, and roustabouts who were genuinely anxious about some calamity happening on the grounds. Unfortunately, this old cirque superstition, like most strangely do, turned out to be true. The next day, Thursday, July 6th, was a hot and sunny summer day, the perfect day to go to a circus, and the local residents did. By a little after 2 p.m., an estimated 7,000 people, mostly women and children, had filled the big top in anticipation for the afternoon show. This almost filled the house, as the tent had a maximum occupancy of around 9,000 people. As the show started, the cheerful spectators watched from their wooden bleachers and folding chairs as animals and performers dazzled the crowd. As animal trainers Mae Kovar and Joseph Walsh finished the big cat act and began herding the animals into chutes leading to the cat's wagons, the Flying Walendas began their daring aerial act. As the performance continued, Merle Evans, the band leader for the show, suddenly saw something extremely worrisome. A small fire had started on the wall of a tent. In keeping with circus tradition, he directed the band to begin playing the Stars and Stripes forever. In the days before Facebook Messenger and cell phones, and even to this day, this is a signal to any circus worker that something is very, very wrong. Immediately, ushers and other workers attempted to put out the fire with buckets of water, dirt, and even by tearing down burning sections of canvas, but the fire was spreading too fast for them to contain. Ringmaster Fred Bradna tried to maintain order 
and direct the crowd to exits, but soon the fire burned through the electrical cables that powered the tent speakers, and Bradna could no longer be heard over the screams and tumult of 7,000 frightened people. Still, Ringmaster Bradna and the ushers began to work feverishly to try to evacuate the crowd. Kovar Walsh and other animal wranglers and handlers quickly began evacuating all of the show's animals from inside and around the tent. As the flames spread up the walls and onto the ceiling of the big top, people truly began to panic, whereas some managed to keep their heads and find a way to one of the exits, some even saving dozens of fellow circus-goers. Others didn't know what to do. Some, instead of trying to get out, stayed, running about in search of their loved ones. Some people were trampled by mobs of terrified people running for anything that resembled an exit. One resourceful young boy simply jumped from his seat on the bleachers and cut a slit in the tent with a pocket knife. His quick thinking saved not only his own life, but that of several others. Within eight minutes, the fire had spread from a single hot spot to a raging inferno and completely engulfed the tent. As horrified onlookers watched, the entire Big Top finally collapsed with hundreds of people still inside. Local fire brigades and police arrived on scene minutes later and joined circus workers and performers in trying to save the trapped and injured. Some were pulled from the burning debris with injuries ranging from minor to severe. Many weren't so lucky. Over 700 people were injured in the terrible fire. Sadly, when the totality of the disaster was tallied, an estimated 167 people were killed. This fact alone is an awful thing to imagine. But when one considers that many of the dead were children, the Hartford Circus fire disaster takes on an even more horrendous aspect. Today it is known as the worst disaster in the history of the American circus. And to this day the cause of the fire remains unsolved. Police investigators officially stated the theory that it was caused by someone dropping a cigarette onto the dry grass near the tent. Then, as well as today, there are those who suspected the fire could have been set deliberately. But who would do such a thing? Six years later, a man named Del Sigi, while being questioned for his suspected involvement in several arson cases, confessed to starting the fire in 1944. Sigi claimed that he was haunted by the vision of a Native American on a flaming horse and told to burn the tent to the ground. Later, he recanted his confession completely. Since there was no evidence he was even present in Hartford on that day, and it was evident that Siggy was suffering from severe mental illness, he was never tried for the crime. On July 7th, charges of involuntary manslaughter were leveled against officials and workers of the circus. Five men, George W. Smith, Leonard S. Ellsworth, James A. Haley, Edward R. Verstig, William Cayley, and David W. Blanchfeld were convicted and given prison time, but all five were completely pardoned later. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus agreed to pay five million to the victims and families of victims in the wake of the disaster, something that took the circus ten years to do, setting aside the show's entire annual profits to achieve. The Hartford Circus Fire has gone down in history as one of the darker days in circus history. The day the clowns cried will long be remembered by the descendants of the people that were there that fateful day in 1944, and by the circus community as a whole. Because this tragedy and others like it happened, shows are now much safer and have stringent emergency protocols and proper firefighting and safety equipment to prevent disasters like this from ever happening again. As with all awful accidents, we should never forget the victims, the heroes, and the events that occurred. And at least in the circus where we value all of the people who come through that tent flap to see the show, we want to ensure that a day of wonder and amazement should never ever be anything but. Thank you.